Oh hi there, my name is Kuizik Tankinsen and welcome to Next Year Live. Today we're starting a new series from the Bible about a man. But before I tell you his name, I want you to guess it. It starts with letter J and he's from the Old Testament. And while you're deciding that, I'm gonna call him my younger brother. My younger brother! Why are you dreaming again? Um... And what are you wearing? I'm wearing a colorful tunic because we're starting our series on... Joseph! Joseph! Oh hi, I'm Yuchi and today we're going to learn about some of the important things that happened in Joseph's life that God used to fulfill his plan. So today, we are going to focus on the fact that even though we think things are not going the way we thought it should be, we can put our trust in God and His amazing plan for our lives. Even when we don't know what's going to happen in the future, we can take comfort knowing that God causes all things to work for our good. Hi! We're the Tankinson family! I'm Shot. And I'm Rika, and this is our two boys. I hope that everyone is safe and doing well. Welcome to Next Gen Live. Today, we will study about how God causes all things to work for the good of those who believe in Him. We're going to read a story in the Bible about Joseph and his brothers. Yes, we are going to learn how God spoke to Joseph and how He showed His great plan to him even though his brothers did not believe in it. Right now, let us open our Bibles to Genesis 37 and let's read the story of Joseph and his brothers. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. And there we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and stood upright, and indeed your sheep stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now his brothers had gone to graze their flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off to the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I am looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? Then have they have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in a distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. He, here comes a dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of those cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. 
Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and mire, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will he gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and now lay our hands on him. After all, after all, he is our brother and our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. Then the Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes. And he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic and killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know where it is, your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughter arose to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now the Midianite had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. So, Zik and Yuchi, how would you summarize the, the story we just read? Um, so basically, um, the story starts when Jacob lives in Canaan and he has um, 12 sons. His favorite son is his 11th son named Joseph. And um, since it, he is Jacob's, since Joseph is Jacob's favorite son, um, his brothers get jealous. And so it also didn't help that um, Jacob gave Joseph um, a very colored tunic. And it also didn't help also that Joseph had dreams about his brothers and family serving him. Wow. What else? And because of those dreams about his family serving him, his brothers got even more angry Joseph. He got so angry they plotted to kill him, but supposedly Reuben saved him and instead they threw him to a pit where he was sold to the Ishmaelites to Egypt. Wow, what a great story. Way to summarize it, Zeke, Yuchi. Now, as you can see in the story, even if Joseph was facing so much difficulty, such uncertain circumstances, God kept him safe. God, in his power, using Reuben or using other circumstances, helped Joseph not be killed and protected him. That just goes to show how sovereign God is. Amen, yes. And if you were in Joseph's shoes, how would you feel? Well, I feel betrayed. I mean, like, my own brother's wanted to kill me. Mm -hmm, yes. 
the same. The same, yes. Yeah, the same. I believe that anyone who's in Joseph's shoes at that time will feel scared and hopeless. And I, I believe that God knows that we do feel that way from time to time. We do have that emotion. But because with God, we cannot dwell in fear and without hope. And so how amazing this story is because this story really gives us a lot of hope in the midst of uncertainties, especially at this time. Wow, there's so much lessons we can pick up from here. For me, as a father, one thing I've learned is not to act like Jacob. I cannot play favorites to my children. That's one lesson I learned from this story. How about you guys? Not to be jealous. Mm, not to be jealous, okay. How about you, Zeke? Even though no matter what happens, you should just always remember that God is with you. Mm. Yes. Nice. And usually, God gives us a big, big dream. And usually, we cannot do it apart from the Lord. It is the Lord, actually, who will do that for us. But we have to participate in His work. Just like in Joshua, just like what He commanded to Joshua, um, be courageous, be brave and courageous. And But He said that, I will never leave nor forsake you. So God gives us a big dream that He alone can accomplish, but we need to participate in His work. Yes, and one more thing is that while we're journeying towards our dream, there will be difficulties. Mm -hmm. And these difficulties are inevitable. But one thing we know for sure is that God has the best plan for us. We just have to be obedient and follow Him. Yeah, I agree because there are many times that we cannot understand the plans of God, like Joseph in that situation being put in a cistern. Anyone? As I've said before, anyone in his shoes will feel scared and hopeless and really question, am I really doing the will of God in this situation that I'm in right now? <laughs> so far, it's really impossible to understand. There are really times that we really have to trust the heart of God. Okay, how about you? What did you pick up from the story? What lessons did you pick up? Now, the big idea the main lesson is we can, we can trust God, God in any situation because, because He has a wonderful plan for His children. How about you guys? Can you say the big idea? Now I want everyone to look at the screen and repeat after me. We can, we can trust God in any situation because He has a wonderful plan for His children. Our Bible verse today tells us that God causes all things to work for good. We may go through trials and hardships, but we can trust God has a wonderful plan for us. Romans 8.28 And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to, th and to those who are called according to His purpose. I hope you had a great time learning about today's Bible story, which reminds us of how we can trust God in any situation because He has a wonderful plan for His children. Okay, guys, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank You, Lord, that You are God Almighty, that You are the perfect, righteous, holy God, a God that knows everything, a God that is in control of everything. Lord, help us. Help us in times of our unbelief, we are scared when things are not going the way we expect them to go. Lord, help us to learn to trust in you. For you said in your own word, you cause all things to work for the good of those who believe in you. So help our unbelief in very difficult situations. We thank you, Lord, for your promises. Help us to hold on to these promises. Thank you, O Lord, that you are a holy, a loving, a merciful, and a gracious God. All these we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, for the last part, let's go to the discussion questions, which will help you understand more the lesson we learned from the Bible. So, first question. How will you know God's plan for your life? Well, I believe that if you want to know that you know what God's plan is for you, you gotta pray. 
because if you don't talk to God who gives you the plan, how do you know? Next, you gotta read the Bible. If it's according to God's word, it must be God's plan. Great answer, Zeke. Second question, what will you do while waiting for God's plan to happen? Pray, pray, pray. Mm, um, how about you, Yuchi? Pray, read the Bible, and obey our parents. Mm. Man, very true. We should grow in our relationship with the Lord as we wait um, for His plan to happen. And um, as, um, as we know, uh, in His Word, He said that um, if you can be trusted with small things, you can also be trusted with great things. So young as you are, the next generation, um, you can actually um, start building your dreams by obeying your parents and um, helping in the house. Even in that small ways, you can you are slowly building God's plan in your life. Okay, thank you, Rix. Here's another question for us. Is it easy to trust God that He has a plan even if things are not going the way we want it? Yuchi, how about you? Um, I think it depends on your faith because like if and your relationship with God because if you don't really know God then yeah, yeah it's going to be hard to trust Him and you do know God, then it's going to be um, easier to trust Him. Great answer, Yuji. Thank you for sharing your thought. How about you, Zeke? Do you have anything else you want to add? Nope. Okay, let's go to the next question. Do you believe that God has a wonderful plan for your life? Why or why not? Yes, I do. Because it said so in um, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. Wow, good. Thank you, Zeke. So, this is where we end. In behalf of the Tankings and family, say bye-bye. Bye. God bless. God bless.